In this video, we're going to talk more about uh, report bursting with Power Automate from a Power BI uh, semantic model. Uh, in the last few videos for Unpaginated, I talked about using Power Automate and or Power Apps uh, to manage subscriptions. Uh, and by subscriptions, I mean when multiple people are setting up their own schedule to, to receive data or reports. Uh, what I mean by report bursting is when one individual needs to send out data to a bunch of places. So here I have a, a Power BI report with a semantic model behind it, a uh, pretty good size one, 820 million rows. And I've got all these uh, stores in all these cities. And let's say I need to send the data out to each of those stores on some schedule. Um, so a great way to do that, of course, is with paginated reports. And so this is just an example of a very simple, not very pretty report uh, that I built. Uh, has a couple parameters, 2,200 uh, rows for that many products and a parameter for the city, in this case, Albany. Um, again, very basic report, but hopefully you, you get the idea. Um, now, one great recent option is this dynamic subscriptions feature that's come out for paginated reports and even more recently for Power BI reports, uh, where you can provide a, a table of, of data for the people that need it um, and parameter values that you can pass in to distribute uh, reports. And this is a great feature. Definitely encourage you to check it out. Um, also, just paginated reports in general, you get you know pixel perfect, tons of flexibility. There's a lot of great stuff you can do with paginated. Um, but I'm going to talk about something new I picked up recently uh, for ways to distribute data and or Excel files. All right, so let's, let's jump into it. So let's say I've got a SharePoint list here that just has all my stores. And this is the list that I'm going to iterate over to get these values of cities and states uh, to filter the data to send out to the stores. OK, and so Power Automate, you know, if the out of the box subscriptions or the dynamic subscriptions don't fully meet your needs, Power Automate can bring uh, a lot of flexibility. And a lot of people have done some great content, blogs or videos on this type of a technique. And so just this is just what a typical um, flow might look like if you're if you're bursting out reports. And so this one is, is leveraging the paginated export. Right. Uh, and you could put it on a schedule. This one I just did manually just for the demo. But I could go out to that SharePoint list, um, get the I think I have 300 cities, I think about 265 have data. But then for each one of those, I could run the export to file for paginated reports action, um, pass in the city value and go ahead and get the data. And from here, you could email it. You could create a SharePoint file. Uh, I've done both. I'm going to just show you the SharePoint option today for consistency for the different approaches. Um, or you could create the file and then email a link to the file. You get tons of flexibility at this point. OK, um, now the new way that I picked up recently was when I was watching a video uh, by Damian Bird. And I want to give him a shout out. This is a great video. I'll put a link in the chat so you can um, sorry, in the description so you can see it as well. Um, and I also want to say thanks to Damian. I pinged him. Uh, and we chatted briefly and he helped me work through a couple errors I was seeing in the flow I'm about to show you. All right. So if we go back to my flows and the feature I want to talk about, well, before I get to office scripts, which is what I learned from his video, uh, I, I want to just show an option. You can just do a straight CSV ex export. Um, and so this one is say, you know, you're using the paginated export, but you're choosing the CSV format this may be a faster option for you. So if I go and edit this flow, um, instead of going out and so same stuff, instead of going out and getting the paginated, rendering the paginated report and then exporting it as CSV, you can just run a query against the data set, right? Um, so in this case, uh, I'm using a compose step here where I'm putting a DAX query and there's multiple ways you could generate this DAX query for sure. Um, you could handwrite it. You could use the, in this case, I just use pretty much the same one from my paginated report um, data set query. Um, you know, DAX Studio, you could use uh, Performance Analyzer and create a visual in Power BI Desktop and grab the DAX behind that. And then I just, you know, modified it to so that I would dynamically drop in the city 
<clears throat> for each iteration here. Um, and while I'm talking about the for each, um, this is very fast, so I could actually crank up the concurrency on this one. So um, you can open the set settings and do concurrency control, and I've got it maxed out at 50 so that you know 50 of these will run in parallel. Uh, from that point, I can then run a query against the data set. You pick the, the workspace and the semantic model. Uh, you pass in the DAX query from above. Then you use the create CSV action. And then you just uh, write that out to SharePoint. I put a condition here to make sure it had data. Some of the, a few of the stores don't have data. So I needed to add this condition to avoid errors. Uh, and then I just create the file on SharePoint. Okay, and this one works very well. Uh, it's actually uh, pretty fast. I'll talk more about this. This one took 12 minutes to go out to 265 stores. All right, and then now if we talk about Office scripts, you know, you say, okay, paginate is great. Sometimes I'm good. If I just need CSV, this will be a good option for me. But uh, my consumers really like Excel and I like, um, it's really familiar to them or there's functionality in Excel that I need. Uh, so, you know, there are other approaches you can do, but they're a little slower to take a CSV and drop it into Excel. And so what I picked up from Damien's video is what I want to show here. And he's leveraging Office Scripts. And so just real quick about Office Scripts, uh, they're, they're very much like macros with, with, with VB, uh, where in that you can go into Excel online or, or desktop, uh, you can record your actions and it'll generate this TypeScript code for you for the different things that you've done. Uh, and then you can save that out. And so this TypeScript is then saved outside of your Excel file in a default uh, um, OneDrive location. And you, know, you may need to modify it a little bit to generalize it to work on every book, but for the most part, it writes the, it writes the code for you. And so this is what I took from, from Damien's video is this all this part up here where he's basically saying, hey, I'm going to pass in um, this array of data from um, my Power Automate flow. Uh, this checks the, the length and width, basically, of the array uh, and then uh, creates this range where it's going to drop it. So it dynamically sizes it to fit on your sheet. And then it drops the data in with this range dot set values uh, step here. Uh, and I won't go through this in detail, but then after that, you just can do all the stuff you want. So in my case, uh, I, I'm just dropping the data in and then I'm using these automated actions to do some formatting, add some calculations, that kind of stuff. So uh, like I'm adding um, column headers. I added this uh, uh, column to do this, to divide two, two other columns. Uh, doing a whole bunch of formatting stuff, that, that kind of thing. So very basic, but just wanted to show the, the gist of what I'm doing there. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to show two scenarios. So one is, this is if I was dropping it into a blank Excel workbook. Uh, but I also want to show dropping it into a um, pre-built uh, workbook as well. So this one, I got this add data to Excel template one. And so the front end of this is all the same, uh, you know, up up to here to drop the data in. Uh, I created a, a tab in this Excel workbook called drop data here. Uh, and then all I'm doing is dropping the data in. And then in this workbook, I happen to have uh, an Excel pivot table. And so I'm actually going ahead and refreshing the, the pivot table as well so that when they open it, all the calculations and all that stuff are already done. So these are those two Excel files. Uh, one is a completely blank one and I'll show why, what we do with this in a second, but there's nothing in it. And then there's just one I called ready for data where I've got this drop data tab where it'll drop the data here. And then once this pivot table refreshes, you know, there's a pivot chart and, and that, and the, so again, very basic Excel, but use your imagination. You can go crazy with this and pre-build a lot of your formatting and calculation, et cetera, and just drop the data in and refresh it. All right, so let's talk about how to do that in the flow. So let's talk about, I'll just do one of them, but they're they're pretty much the, the same. Uh, so if I go into edit, again, the, the front end is, is the same uh, as the one for the CSV where I'm running a query against the data set. 
Uh, I need some other stuff here. So there's this one called Excel template file content. And so this would be the same for the blank one and how you generate this. And Damien shows this in his video as well. Sorry, I should have showed this first. I have this other flow where, and this is a one-time thing you need to do, uh, where I have get file contents for other flows. And I have both, both files in here, but they don't need to be run in sequence like this, uh, where all you do is do go out and do the get file action in Power Automate one time. And I go out and I find uh, that Excel file, in this case, the blank file, and this, this is the get ready for data file. Uh, and then you run an executed, you look, you, you run the flow one time. And then from the executed flow, you can come here and you have to get this file content. You copy and paste this whole thing, including the, all of it. Uh, and you copy and paste that to this, to this other flow. So that's, that's how you do that. So you create your Excel template, do the get file action one time, grab the file content, and then just have a compose step, um, to have it ready. And then that file can be deleted. You don't really need it anymore. So that's this, um, compose step and this flow, right? So I dropped in that file content here. Um, then I just have this, uh, header array. So I've got, I'm, I know I'm returning four columns of data with my query and it's these four columns. Um, it has to be a nested array and Damien explains that in his video. Uh, so it's just got this extra set of, uh, square brackets. And then from there, uh, I've got my DAX query, just like before I run the query against the data set. Again, I check to make sure that I have data. And then I uh, have this parse JSON step, uh, which Damien walks through how to do that, uh, putting in sample data so that it'll, it'll generate this from, from sample data. I'm using the first table rows from the, from the query step. Um, then uh, you're using a select action, which is a real powerful action in Power Automate to take those four fields from that and putting it also into a nested array. Then I, Put them together with a union step. I put the header with the with the data, and from there I can do the uh, I can create the file, and so I'm dynamically naming this. Uh, I have a, a SharePoint library and folder set up for this. Um, I'm doing a prefix of template file just for this demo. I drop in the city and state name, and then the current uh, UTC now, basically minutes and seconds, so I don't end up with duplicate files, um, and then. Uh, I drop in the, the file content, um, which is from the beginning of the step, the blank, uh, Excel. And then, then once that's file created, I get the ID from that step. And then, uh, I choose the script and this looks in that default, uh, OneDrive location. So you'll see your, your different, uh, ones here. These are the two I showed previously. And then, um, it, uh, then you drop in the, the combined nested array with your header and your data. Now, uh, with this, this is actually very fast, but I had to add a delay step here, uh, and I had to modify the concurrency. So one thing to know about this run script in Power Automate is there are some limits. And uh, I'm looking at these right here where you get up to 1600 per day per user. Um, so that's, that's quite a bit, but. While I was working this out, I hit this one day. Um, but the other thing is you can only make three run script calls per 10 seconds. And so because of that, I put a 10 second delay because sometimes this runs in less than a second. Um, and uh, I also changed the concurrency uh, to three. And so if they ever raise this limit, this is gonna become even faster. Um, but I change, I dropped my concurrency all the way down to three to make sure that I don't hit that rate limit. Uh, I was, I was hitting that every time before, cause I was trying to make this go super fast. Um, but then I learned about that limit, uh, from Damien. All right. Um, so that's the gist of the approach. And again, the one with, uh, going to the blank file is the same. It just puts it in a blank file and then runs, uh, more automated steps, uh, with the script to, format and, and do calculations and things. And then 
Uh, what else did I want to show? Oh, I, I want to also talk about how this looks from a capacity metric standpoint. So obviously all this activity, querying the data sets, exporting paginated reports uh, is going to hit your uh, premium capacity uh, for it. So I want to just show what this looks like on the metrics app. And so uh, I ran these a couple of days ago and I've got my metrics app, you know, filtered just by clicking here to just the, the 23rd. And these are the sort of the four examples that I showed you. So, uh, and I'll show you a slide in a second that summarizes all this, but these are the, you know, the query to, to CSV, the dropping it into a blank template. Then I got busy and came back to it and then um, dropping it into the pre-built template. And then this is actually the export to uh, paginated reports. And so the reason I'm showing you this is, you know, the different operations can either count as interactive or background. Uh, and so uh, uh, interactive operations are smoothed out over five minutes. And you see these red lines here uh, for that activity and things that count as background are smoothed out over 24 hours. Uh, and so that's what this blue here is. This was some other activity I was doing. Uh, this blue, this is the paginated export. Um, and so what, uh, what, just to show you that a little more, if I do this expand to next level on the 23rd, and then I scroll over this, if you do expand the next level, it lets you get to the, so you see the day and hour. Let me keep scrolling here. So this is these, these four activities here. And so this is a good example of, of smoothing um, where this is the CSV, the next hour I ran the uh, blank Excel, then I came back and did the pre-built and then I did the paginated because I knew it was going to smooth out over 24 hours. So I wanted to run it last. And so um, this is also where you can say filter this and then you can see like what ran in that hour. And you can see down here, uh, I've got both the paginated rendering as well as the hitting the data set for, for the queries. And I can see, um, you know, how much capacity unit seconds each each one took. Right. And so this one I've got you know, getting the data from the data set, 31,000 capacity unit seconds, and then rendering of all those reports uh, took 41,000 about. Uh, and then if we look at, say, this one here, uh, you won't see the, the paginated, right? We'll just see the, once this updates, and it, this is showing over that whole hour, Taking a second here. Right, so then you don't see the paginate anymore. All we see is the data set and it took 36,000 um, capacity unit seconds. And you can always hover over here to see a breakdown of the operations for that item uh, during the selected time period. And we don't need to see that. All right, and so just quick, I made this PowerPoint slide that shows a summary of it. And so, you know, the interactive versus background is something else you're going to need to consider. So for the paginated report, it may give you the functionality, the different export formats uh, th that you need. Um, plus, it, it smooths over 24 hours. Uh, but these other ones, if I just need CSVs, this could be a faster option and less uh, capacity unit seconds. Uh, the office um, scripts to the blank or were very similar in the amount of time and the amount of capacity unit seconds. Uh, so I just wanted to share this video um, to, you know, give you another tool for the toolbox. If we look at one of the examples, this is one of the ones dropping into the, the template. I'll choose Albany. Uh, and you can see here we've now we've got the data dropped in on the drop data here tab. And then my analysis, the pivot tables already refreshed. Again, not very pretty, um, but you know, this you, with time, you could make this look really nice and have a nice report uh, in an Excel format that people really like uh, that could be put on SharePoint or or emailed to your consumers.